Every night across Japan, cheering crowds witness heated battles of pro wrestling. Over 150 events are held every month. Sixty years ago, pro wrestling superstar Ricky Dozan drove the Japanese people wild, lifting the country's spirits after its demoralizing defeat in the war. Men and women of all ages have been hooked on this thrilling form of entertainment ever since. In the 1970s, some female pro wrestlers became as famous as pop stars. It just makes me happy. I love it. It's fun. It gives me energy. It helps me to forget all the bad stuff. It gets me ready to face tomorrow. But the failure of some wrestling organizations led to money problems and some wrestlers now also work outside the ring. On this edition of Begin Japanology, our theme is pro wrestling. We'll explore the appeal of this popular entertainment, which blurs the line between fantasy and reality. Hello and welcome to Begin Japanology. I'm Peter Barakan. This venue is in Shinkiba, on the eastern side of Tokyo, and it's devoted to pro wrestling. They have events here just about every week in front of wildly enthusiastic audiences. The sports that you see at the Olympic Games, for example, are of course competitive in nature, but pro wrestling, as I'm sure most people know, is basically an entertainment sport. And in Japan, it's evolved in a different way from other countries. Let's move straight on and have a look. A pro wrestling bout is usually either one on one or two on two. It takes place in a ring, a square mat about six meters on each side. The ring has a post in each corner and three ropes form each side. Fighters often weigh over 100 kilograms. They slam their opponents to the ground, hit them with elbows and fists, unleash soaring aerial maneuvers and employ grappling techniques. These are extreme moves that could kill them if things go wrong. A pro wrestler wins by pinning an opponent's shoulders to the mat while the referee counts to three. But pro wrestling is about more than simply winning and losing. The sport is all about appealing to the spectators. The attacker must show superb form. The receiver of the attack must show the spectators how hard he is struggling against the opponent's deadly maneuvers. The USA, Mexico and Japan are considered the top three countries for pro wrestling. Each has its own style. American pro wrestling puts its focus on showmanship. Matches are typically completely staged. Enormous venues are packed with screaming crowds. It's normal to admit that encounters are scripted. Hollywood screenwriters often work in the industry. The world's biggest pro wrestling group is America's WWE. Its matches are broadcast live worldwide. This is Mexico. The whole family comes to enjoy a match in a small hall. The wrestlers improvise moves that won Mexican wrestling the name Lucha Libre, or free fighting. Most wrestlers are on the smaller side, but they wow the spectators with graceful aerial stunts. A lot of wrestlers wear masks, as they also have day jobs. Japanese pro wrestling takes elements from both the US and Mexico and adds its own unique twist. There is currently a crowd of pro wrestling organizations in Japan, each with its own niche. One group focuses on comedy, bringing laughter to the sport. This group runs fluorescent lights along the ropes and doesn't shy away from blood. The spectators are drawn to fights billed as death matches. Another group shuns flashy showmanship and highlights the skills required in bringing an opponent to submission. One new group defies the convention that pro wrestling belongs in the ring. It has held fights in bookshops and campsites, among other venues. <laughs> the 
there's been a recent increase in wrestlers who represent a specific local area. This local appeal wrestling is intended to boost the regional economy. Pro wrestling today is a major part of Japanese popular culture, and its wide variety of styles has caught the attention of foreign fans too. You'll often see action figures of famous pro wrestlers. These four are some of the best known, and each comes with his own catchphrase. Starting from the left over here, this guy is known for his burning fighting spirit. He's a true Japanese superstar. This is the giant of the Orient at 2.09 meters, an astonishing physique which helped him to conquer the US as well. This is Tiger Mask, known for his 4D killing move, which comes from his fast footwork that helps him fly across the ring. And this is the Revolutionary Warrior, a name that he earned when he put an end to the unbeaten streak of wins by burning fighting spirit over here. All these catchphrases sound a bit video game-ish, don't they? And each one has its own backstory. It all helps to keep the popularity going. Let's move on and take a look now at how wrestlers started to take on these personas and how the Japanese audience reacted to them. Japanese pro wrestling was launched by the popularity of one wrestler, Riki Doza. The sight of him taking down US wrestlers with karate chops was a way to work through the resentment many Japanese felt in the wake of the Second World War. The next superstars were Giant Baba and Antonio Inoki. Both were Ricky Dozan's protégés. Pro wrestling was broadcast live on TV every week and it fast became popular with all kinds of audiences. It even appeared in comic books. One pro wrestling comic hit was Tiger Mask. The hero even fought real life matches, wearing his trademark Tiger Mask. This strange blend of reality and fiction actually made fans even more enthusiastic. Female pro wrestlers came to enjoy the same kind of renown as pop singers. But even at the height of its popularity, pro wrestling was being attacked as vulgar. Then a book was published in 1980. Its title was, I am a pro wrestling fan. Author Tomomi Muramatsu examined the appeal of pro wrestling in the context of academic ideas, such as structuralism and symbolism. He described watching pro wrestling as an extreme act, both ideologically and emotionally. Pro wrestling, he wrote, may have a weak social standing, but it brings together the extreme fighter and the extreme audience. The merging of these two extreme entities creates the world of pro wrestling. Science fiction writer Baku Yume Makura also fell under the spell of pro wrestling. Yume Makura has written a lot about combat sports, and he regards pro wrestling as the ultimate fantasy. The wrestler who first captivated his heart was Antonio Inoki. He said, pro wrestling is the greatest combat sport in the world. And I just loved his rebel attitude. I wondered if Inoki and those serious martial arts fighters actually had an all-out fight, which will win? Which is stronger? What Inoki said was, let's have mixed martial arts matches and prove it. And in the end, he went on to fight Viram Ruska and Muhammad Ali. And of course, it was very exciting. No one had believed those guys would actually take the challenge. But you know, at the end of the day, it's impossible to prove who's the strongest. And that's why I have to write about it in novels. Even in novels, I never achieve that, no matter how I write the story. So we haven't found out yet. I guess it's all about chasing that fantasy. Fighters from many traditions have become pro wrestling stars. Naoya Ogawa, the judo world champion. Sumo Grand Champion, Akebono. The fantasy of pro wrestling captivated both of them. 
Is it real or fiction? Brutal combat or pretend fighting? The fans embrace the unanswered questions. And every day a gong will sound somewhere in Japan to mark the beginning of another combat drama. They're in the middle of a two against two tag team match now and all of these wrestlers are university students. They're called student pro wrestlers and they're regarded as being bona fide pro wrestlers, although strictly speaking they are amateurs. And this contradiction is yet another unique part of Japanese pro wrestling. I'm hoping to get to... <laughs> <laughs> this is Watanabe-san. <laughs> Hello, and thanks for being with us. Hello. There is a bit of a contradiction, isn't there, where you say student pro wrestlers? Well, pro wrestling doesn't mean that the wrestlers are professionals. Pro wrestling is simply the name of the sport. Do you actually have any intention to become a professional wrestler after you graduate? Oh, I myself do not. I've always done this as a hobby. When I entered university, I learned that there was this thing called student pro wrestling and I joined up. Which element of pro wrestling most attracted you? Was it the sports part of it or the entertainment side, or both? I think pro wrestling is a great form of entertainment. It has this really special appeal. You've got all these flashy techniques, right? I think that's so cool. And it's something you can really only find in pro wrestling. For me, that's the best part about it. Thank you very much. Thank you. OK, let's find out a little bit more about the world of student pro wrestling now. A university campus in the Tokyo suburbs. The ring is simply a mat on a stage where students practice their moves. There are about 150 student pro wrestlers in Japan. Despite their amateur status, they take things very seriously. I did judo throughout my school years. I have a second dan. Oh, no. Uh, I knew who Tiger Mask was, but that was about it. Well, it looked cool, so I just thought I'd try it. I did regular wrestling before. Uh, everyone here has a different background. A few used to do baseball. Others didn't do any sport. The entertainment factor is what attracted me. Sport is fine, but I'm more interested in making the crowd happy. I want to do things that get them laughing. That's why I'm here. Every March, student wrestlers from across Japan take part in the Student Pro Wrestling Summit. For the fourth years, who will soon be graduating, this is their final summit. The main event is a tag match between two of them and two younger students. It's called the Generation Tag. It might be regarded as a generation shift, but we're not holding back. We're going to win. We want to leave university as winners. In pro wrestling, the crowd, they sometimes wonder if the result of a match was rigged. But we're going to beat those two fourth years into a pulp. So nobody will think that about our win. Practice continues every day, well into the night. Suidobashi, Tokyo. Korakuen Hall is sacred ground in the world of Japanese pro wrestling. It has seen countless historic fights. The students handle every aspect of the event in this hallowed hall, from presentation to general management. The Student Pro Wrestling Summit will have seven matches in all. About 30 wrestlers from first to fourth years will take part. The atmosphere is no different from that of a professional event. T-shirts and other goods are on sale. The venue seats 2,000 and is almost full. The spectators range from serious pro wrestling fans to the participants' classmates. 
The first time I came, I got hooked on the students' enthusiasm. This is my first time at a student pro wrestling event. It's kind of exciting, but I'm also wondering if it will actually be any good. During the opening ceremony, a wrestler enters the ring, his arms around his friend's shoulders. This is Go Shiofuki, who will graduate from Keio University. He's something of a celebrity and is nicknamed Mr. Student Pro Wrestling. He was supposed to be fighting in the Generation Tag, the main event. But six days before the event, he suffered a major injury, a complex fracture of his left ankle. He had to pull out. We will prove to you just how amazing student pro wrestling and pro wrestling itself can be. Thank you for all your support. Thank you for everything. Let the Student Pro Wrestling Summit 2013 begin! The wrestlers appear to blaring music. First of all, a tag match between two teams of first-year students. Their fighting full of youth and passion stirs up the crowd. The third fight is a regional match. It features Kansai against Kyushu. The Kansai team engages the crowd with a touch of comedy, something the Osaka region is known for. All the professional grey performances have the spectators on the edge of their seats. Shiofuki watches the wrestling. He also commentates from his wheelchair. The students parody real pro wrestlers to the delight of the crowd. Generation Tag Match is the seventh and last. It even features a real pro wrestling announcer. All of you lovers of pro wrestling, are you ready for some student pro wrestling? Featuring the very best of the best. Prepare for an emotion-packed meltdown. The soul of student wrestling is at stake. It's a 60-minute one-fall match. Who will win, the university leavers or the younger students? The wrestlers produce some big moves early on. It's pretty intense. One fourth year uses an octopus hole, showing off his technique. The younger students opt for power. One throws a lariat. It's a knockdown, drag out fight between the skills and experience of the fourth years and the dogged determination of the younger fighters. Near the end of the fight, one of the fourth years pulls off an impressive moonsault press. It looks like the winning move, but he can't quite get the three count. Finally, a younger student seals a major upset, winning with a backdrop. After more than half an hour of no-holds-barred combat, the generation shift is complete. A grand finale goes on in the ring to close the event. Mr. Student Pro Wrestling, Go Shiofuki. He did his part too, even if he wasn't in the ring. They may be pro wrestlers for just four years, but they pass their passion on to the next generation of student wrestlers. That is their legacy. Thank you. All right, they get me to do some pretty crazy things on this show. I'm just hoping that I get to go home alive today. 
Watanabe san, who I just interviewed, gets to have his re revenge on me now. And he's going to do a move on me, which I think is called the Cobra Twist. Yep. Okay. Let's take it away then. <laughs> First, uh, wrap your right leg around your opponent's right leg. All right. I don't think I like that. Next, go under and through your opponent's left armpit and grab his neck. All right. That's a bit of a strain going on. Last, wrap the neck. This is the special move of Antonio Inoki, the burning fighting spirit. Which is the cobra bit? It's the way you coil around your opponent's body like this. With this technique, you're inflicting pain on both your opponent's hip joint and the muscles under his arm at the same time. OK, both at the same time is probably not too great. OK, and now it's my turn, yeah? And we're going to do the figure four leg lock. Now, I've got no idea, so you're going to have to tell me what to do and I'll, I'll try and get it right. All right? OK. When your opponent's lying down, take his right leg. Right leg, OK. Now, bring your left leg here, right here. OK. So I'm going in here like this. And then pull my leg around here. Here, like that. Yep. And put it down here. Oh, cool. This is the figure four, OK. So this. All right. Last, lift up your opponent's left leg and wrap your right leg around here. So I have to fall down first. Oh, my God, I'm going to do that. <laughs> Did that really hurt? Ah, to hurt Trouble with these guys is they always act anyway. <laughs> I do feel a little bit better about that now, but um, there are a lot of moves in pro wrestling where you do need the cooperation of your opponent. And in fact, it's one big feature of the sport that you do get together to show off each other's skills the best you can, and of course, thereby entertain the audience all the more. These days, Japanese pro wrestling is divided up into a number of different genres, which means that each one has a smaller audience. It's a bit like the indie scene in the music industry, and perhaps not surprisingly, money can get a little bit tight for the smaller groups. This is an indie pro wrestling group based in Tokyo. Their main focus is on entertainment. The matches are full of novel ideas that ensure the spectators have a great time. After a match, the wrestlers themselves sell goods. They do their best to greet and spend time with fans. Some spectators move on to a local bar after the match. <laughs> They're talking about the bouts they've just seen, a common enough sight in any bar. But there seem to be a lot of rather muscular staff here. I always come here after a fight. It's great to be able to talk to pro wrestlers. You feel close to them. The bar staff are actually all wrestlers in the group that put on the event. Sanchiro Takagi, the head of this pro wrestling organization and himself a wrestler, didn't begin this side business simply for economic reasons. Well, if the only thing you know is pro wrestling, you end up having a pretty narrow perspective on things. Learning about the outside world can help you in the ring, and the spectators come to the bar, don't they? They see the guys working tables, serving customers, and the wrestlers come across in a different light. That can help to turn new people into fans. It's a great way to really interact with the spectators, a great way to get to know them better. The group has also opened a stretching physical therapy service. Here, pro wrestlers have the chance to put their strength and skill to use in a different way. Here they are, the Osaka Pro Wrestling Group. Meanwhile, one group has begun to care for the elderly. 
pro wrestlers are both strong and friendly. Combining these two traits made caring for the elderly a natural fit. We wrestlers need to think hard about our second careers. If we were baseball or football players, this is just about the age when we'd retire. So when it comes to thinking about a second career, as a group we want to develop a system that helps wrestlers become qualified caregivers. The group also invite the elderly residents of the homes where they work to come and watch their fights. This group has a comedy focus, which has proved very popular with the first-time senior visitors. The wrestlers have seen a big increase in their older fan base. It was such great fun. It was very exciting. Pro wrestlers have jumped out of the ring. Who knows? You may see a working wrestler the next time you're out and about in Japan. Well, today we've had a look at the history and unique features of Japanese pro wrestling and how the wrestlers fight and live today. I myself have been living here in Tokyo for almost 40 years now, but I somehow didn't imagine myself getting involved in things like cobra twists and figure four leg locks. The world of pro wrestling is inhabited by a variety of different types of people, from students to some fairly eccentric characters. At the heart of the sport's not so much about winning or losing. It's got a particular appeal for so many people. I myself can't really say that I'm that much of a fan, but strangely enough, when you get up in the ring here with the ropes and the lights and everything, there's a kind of weird animal instinct that takes over. I'll see you again next time. <laughs> Strawberries have been Japan's favorite fruit for a quarter of a century, and now the world is learning why. We examine the fascinating history and future potential of this fantastic food. Every night across Japan, cheering crowds witness heated battles of pro wrestling. Over 150 events are held every month. Sixty years ago, pro wrestling superstar Ricky Dozan drove the Japanese people wild, lifting the country's spirits after its demoralizing defeat in the war. Men and women of all ages have been hooked on this thrilling f The world's biggest pro wrestling group is America's WWE. Its matches are broadcast live worldwide. This is Mexico. The whole family comes to enjoy a match in a small hall. The wrestlers improvise moves have won Mexican wrestling the name Lucha Libre, or free fighting. Most wrestlers are on the smaller side, but they wow the spectators with graceful aerial stunts. A lot of wrestlers wear masks, as they also have day jobs. Japanese pro wrestling takes elements from both the US and Mexico and adds its own unique twist. There is currently a crowd of pro wrestling organizations in Japan, each with its own niche. See at the Olympic Games, for example, are of course competitive in nature. But pro wrestling, as I'm sure most people know, is basically an entertainment sport. And in Japan, it's evolved in a different way from other countries. Let's move straight on and have a look. A pro wrestling bout is usually either one on one or two on two. It takes place in a ring, 
a square mat about six metres on each side. The ring has a post in each corner and three ropes form each side. Fighters often weigh over 100 kilograms. They slam their opponents to the ground, hit them with elbows and fists, unleash soaring aerial manoeuvres and employ grappling techniques. Form of entertainment ever since. In the 1970s, some female pro wrestlers became as famous as pop stars. It just makes me happy. I love it. It's fun. It gives me energy. It helps me to forget all the bad stuff. It gets me ready to face tomorrow. But the failure of some wrestling organizations led to money problems, and some wrestlers now also work outside the ring. On this edition of Begin Japanology, our theme is pro wrestling. We'll explore the appeal of this popular entertainment, which blurs the line between fantasy and reality. Hello and welcome to Begin Japanology. I'm Peter Barakan. This venue is in Shinkiba on the eastern side of Tokyo and it's devoted to pro wrestling. They have events here just about every week in front of wildly enthusiastic audiences. The sports that you see... These are extreme moves that could kill them if things go wrong. A pro wrestler wins by pinning an opponent's shoulders to the mat while the referee counts to three. But pro wrestling is about more than simply winning and losing. The sport is all about appealing to the spectators. The attacker must show superb form. The receiver of the attack must show the spectators how hard he is struggling against the opponent's deadly maneuvers. The USA, Mexico and Japan are considered the top three countries for pro wrestling. Each has its own style. American pro wrestling puts its focus on showmanship. Matches are typically completely staged. Enormous venues are packed with screaming crowds. It's normal to admit that encounters are scripted. Hollywood screenwriters often work in the industry. 